and let us all that we can to build a better future. What is a growing on? Okay. So uh, in the midst of everything failing and no one doing the right thing, you guys remember I've talked a lot about infrastructure. Infrastructure is a really big thing because infrastructure is the backbone on which you build everything in your country. China is putting down a huge amount of infrastructure that's going to uh, help them grow for the next 50, 60 years. 50, 60 years ago, we put money into infrastructure. Now we don't. Um, and uh, Congress has unveiled a bill that uh, is laughably tiny. I've talked before that to just get the um, American, the grade of our infrastructure as we have it now, without even expanding it, to a C, fixing the bridges that are broken, that no one seems to notice except civilians inspecting it. But um, here we are. Uh, Congress has unveiled a bill that might pass while America breaks, and it's uh, like 10% of what's needed to have a passing grade. A passing grade in school is a, what, 70%? Yeah, something so like this that. is a seven at right now is a seven percent bill, and I know that uh, the squad says they're going to be trying to do something to make it five, which is still a thirty-five percent. You know, we'll see what happens. We'll see if they're just too late to stop a bill or whatever. But uh, for now, let's talk about what we have. <sighs> U.S. senators have unveiled nearly uh, one trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill after much delay, which is a lot of privatizing, and yeah. we need ten trillion. So again. Wrapping up days of painstaking work on the inches thick bill and launching what is certainly a lengthy debate over President Joe Biden's big priority, by the way. This is a 2,700 page bill, which means a lot of people are getting carve outs in uh, the private sector. So the uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act was produced Sunday night and clocked in at some 20, 2,700 pages. Senators could have uh, become uh, begun amending soon. This is pre-amendment, so someone's going to get pork somewhere else. The final product was not intended to stray from the broad outlines senators had negotiated on with the weeks with the White House. Quote, we haven't done a large bipartisan uh, bill of this nature in a long time. I think that kind of summarizes everything that's wrong with the American government right now. They haven't worked on a big bill in a long time in a big country with a lot of big problems, and the bill is 10% as big as it needs to be to be adequate. A good bill would be 15 train, but whatever, whatever. Uh, we just increased military funding, so it's okay. A uh, Democrat of New York said, uh, he said the final vote could be done in a matter of days, which means everyone's going to have an easy time reading this. A key part of Biden's agenda, the bipartisan bill, is the first phase of the president's infrastructure plan. It calls for $550 billion in new spending over five years, so it's really not a $5 trillion bill. It's a <laughs> partially a hundred. Billion dollar a year bill, which is one percent. Okay, uh, above uh, five above the projected federal levels, uh, which could be one of the most substantial expenditures on the nation's roads, bridges, waterworks, uh, broadband, and electrical grid in years. It's very expensive when you break down how much it takes to do a mile of anything, especially the way that we do it in America. So, oh well. Uh, anyway, we know that this has been a long and sometimes difficult process. We are proud to announce. This legislation said good friend of the show, just kidding, Christian Cinema, that Democrat of Arizona, and lead negotiator. So you know that if Christian Cinema is the one negotiating this, it's going to be good. The bill shows we can put aside our political differences to uh, do the good work of our country, as you guys know. Uh, whenever bipartisanship happens to this degree in Washington, you're going to get screwed. So uh, I, I'm, I'm just expecting, just, just to guess that I've been reading the bill, get ready for new toll roads, things of that nature. Senator Rob Portman of Ohio, Republican negotiator, said the final project will be great uh, for the American people. The, you know, the guy from the party who's all about privatizing everything that the government does is happy with the bill, so of course it'll work well. Among the new major, uh, the major new Im investments, the bipartisan package is expected to provide $110 billion uh, for bridges and roads, $39 billion for public transit. Uh, $66 billion for rail. I'm sure Biden was happy with that. There's also set to be a $55 billion for water and wastewater infrastructure. I'm happy with that. We really need that in this country. I just want to see what that is. As well as billions for airports, ports, in, in, uh, broadband internet, and electrical vehicle charging stations. Payment for the package has uh, been a challenge after senators rejected the idea of raising revenue through a gas tech or other streams. Instead, I love this, instead it's going to be financed from funding sources that might not pass muster with deficit talks, including, it's happening again, 
They're repurposing $205 billion of untapped COVID relief money. So remember, before it was like, ah, we have put the COVID monies over here. We'll move it over here. Now they're like, ah, we can still get left. We'll move it over here. <laughs> so, a <fifth> of <laughs> so a fifth of this is COVID funding that they haven't spent, uh, as well as unemployment assistance that was turned back by some states and relying on future uh, future economic growth. At last one, like, okay, uh, but it's funny that they're really saying, hey, this is the money that we were supposed to give to the Republican states who didn't want to help their people, and they turned it away. So they're going to use that money. I don't know how much that is, but they're going to be using that money to put mm -hmm. into this bill. So nothing... It, they're they're doing ten percent of the minimum. Ten percent to get a seventy percent. If you were in school and you needed a seventy percent chance, they got a. They're putting seven percent in and being like, "We've done it, guys. We've done a. We've done a great thing. Where are we going to pull funding from? Mostly uh, funds that we haven't used because you know those deficit hawks got to do what they say. I mean, that's what Cinema said, and you know, if Cinema says this is the way to do it. And she's going to bring cake for everyone. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to go with. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> what is this? What is this bill? What are, what's it going to do? It's, it's like to like build a highway in America. Like one mile is like something like, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong on this one. I don't remember the exact number. But it's like one mile of highway is like $20 million. So, okay. So if, if, if my number is right, maybe it's $2 million. I don't know. If it's, let's say it's two million. Two million, two million for one mile of highway. Okay. Well, that's five miles for ten million dollars, and fifty for five hundred million, and five thousand for half a trillion. So this bill is effectively ten thousand miles of highway, or less highway than we actually have in America, and that's. Just highway. And how much are they putting into it? How much are they putting into highways? Oh, right. Uh, 110 billion. And this is roads and bridges. That's just not highways. I'm just making the point that this is not going to be all that helpful. This is like someone with like a clogged artery, like going for like a foot or I don't know, however. And they're like, you know what? We're going to fix this by removing uh, about an inch, an inch of that clog. So here, here's the thing, Daniel. Um, we talked about how inept Congress is. This infrastructure bill is nothing. It's, it's not going to do a damn thing for yeah. anybody in any state whatsoever. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, look, infrastructure is great. I think we all can agree on it. But there's also a bigger looming problem, and that is this, folks. 15 million Americans, and dare I say it, it might be larger than that, are at risk from being evicted from their homes. People are going to be living in their cars. People are going to be starving in the streets. People are going to be sick in the streets. There's going to be more Bidenvilles, and that's what we need to start calling them. There's a, here's the thing. The American people need a multi-trillion dollar bailout, a very high multi-trillion dollar bailout, plus debt for, me, medical debt forgiveness, student debt forgiveness, and this all has to be done now because to these progressive lawmakers, if you really want to hold the Biden administration accountable, Force him to use his goddamn executive order. If not, well, it, here's a couple things that are going to happen. For me, in my point of view, this has convinced me now through and through to vote third party. Because the Democrats have lost all my confidence. And I'm not going to vote Republican because the Democratic and Republican establishment are friends with each other. And this is what Democratic voters and Republican voters need to realize. Your lawmakers abandoned you. But they're going to help out the corporations. They're going to help out the banks, the Wall Street executives. You, be a Republican voter or a Democratic voter, do not and will never have a seat at the table. Even if they do all this performative art or put out all these feel-good tweets, whether they're a Democrat or Republican, whether you agree with those words or not, they're giving you words and statements, not deeds or actions. And they're okay with 15 million Americans or more being evicted from their homes. It's happening now as we speak, and it's madness and stupidity.